Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I've heard for the last few weeks, what did you give up for Lent? Well, I've got to say, I'm as tired of hearing that from folks as I am from hearing Oh, you're a deacon. Well, when are you going to become a priest? <laughs> Seriously, though, I'm, I'm always more open to taking on something rather than giving up something. Whether it's for Lent or for working out problems in my own life or just serving God's people. I don't want you to misunderstand me. There are good and proper times for giving up something. So just look, for instance, at the Ten Commandments that we've heard today. There's lots of giving up on that list, and rightly so. These Ten Commandments are the basic rules of life that God has given us to live by. And it's for that purpose that God instructs us so that our lives will be lived in peace and harmony with each other. Just as with your children, God sometimes has to tell us, don't. It's like telling a child not to touch a hot stove. Now, positives don't always work in cases like that. <laughs> has it ever struck you that violations of these ten simple rules, beyond just separating us from God, are certain to make our lives in communion with others, virtually unlivable. If you want to create your own hell on earth, just break one of these commandments and then try to live with it for a while. Try in your mind to justify it. Try to excuse it. Try to sleep on it. Now the psalmist today gives us very good reasons to pay attention to God's commandments, to stay away from that hot stove. And everybody did such a beautiful job of reading that psalm together. You know, some over here, some over there. I had, I had the feeling everybody was paying attention. <laughs> and the psalmist says, the law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than gold, sweeter far than honey. By them, by those commandments, also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them, there is great reward. Keeping God's commandments is very important. They make complete sense for a community that strives to live in harmony. <clears throat> but does any community live in complete harmony? Of course not. But does God give us simple answers? Of course He does. In ten clear rules of life, which Jesus later boiled down to really just two, or however you count it, three. And what is that answer to peaceful coexistence, to having peace among ourselves? I'll tell you that it's centered on what I preach about almost every time I get up here. Get out of yourself. Now you can apply that to each commandment and it helps to make it very clear. As the psalmist says, that's the perfect way to live. And the reward is indeed great. 
But to get back to what I said earlier, giving up some things may be good, even necessary. But what about taking on something? Taking on something to get out of yourself. For the good of the community that we live in. For the good of Keller and Southlake. For the good of the state of Texas. <coughs> for the good of America. For the good of the entire world. For the homeless and the forgotten. For the good of those who are troubled. And for those who are sick. For the good of those who just need a friend. And really for the good of our own soul. It's that getting out of ourselves thing. Take, for instance, those who are troubled by injustice. Now, Jesus saw injustice and blasphemy and impropriety in God's temple. So he took on something with a length of knotted cord. Now, I'll tell you that being struck with a length of knotted rope is not fun. Anybody who's done a little calf roping has felt that from their own clumsy efforts. I know, that's hard to believe. I did that many years ago, but that's the truth. <laughs> It'll get your attention very quickly. In the days of sailing ships, bosuns used to start the crews with knotted cords. That hurts like anything. It doesn't leave the stripes that whip does. Jesus knew about those things. And even though Jesus was willing to give up everything, everything for us in unimaginable ways, he also took on things to remind us that we should go and do likewise. So this Lent, I suggest you look at ways to take on something. Now, maybe not driving out the money changers, but... Take on, for instance, healing of the sick. I mean that through your prayers, your visitation, your care of those people who are ill, you make a huge difference. A huge healing difference. Take on a visit to someone who is alone or in a hospital or in a nursing home. Better yet, join us here at St. Martin's in the ministry of taking communion to those people who cannot be with us during our regular worship services. Look for those opportunities. Look in places that we might not see because in the church office we don't always hear about those people that we need to include in the community of this table. Think about that. And when you take on something, this Lent, when you take on something outside yourself, it turns God's words from negative to positive. The best way to stay away from that dangerous hot stove is to share yourself, share your love. Share your healing touch with others.